There is good news for us today, and it comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, the 14th chapter. Jesus observes guests jockeying for a position at the table. He uses the opportunity to teach his hearers to choose humility rather than self-exaltation. Jesus also makes an appeal for hosts to imitate God's gracious hospitality to those in need. Now the reading. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. But he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor. He told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when you, your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will re be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Before I begin, I was asked to uh, give an update on our parish administrator, Nancy Heaney. As many of you know, she uh, came down with COVID uh, this past Wednesday. And so I spoke with her yesterday. She said, I feel fine, except I have a runny nose and a cough. But now her, Fred, uh, her husband, Fred, is also dealing with COVID. So we continue to keep them in our prayers and thoughts for a safe recovery. Self-esteem. We've heard a lot about it in recent years. It has to do with valuing yourself because of your accomplishments. A child learns their ABCs, and we praise them. A teenager maybe raises their grade point average, and we want to reward them. Mom becomes the employee of the month. Earning a higher education degree may be the way in which we accomplish something we feel good about. Or not just playing an instrument, but playing it well. Being above average as an athlete or in science. I was at a funeral several years ago where a young woman was asked to get up and speak about her grandmother. She introduced herself, and she says, I was asked to speak because I was grandma's favorite grandchild. <laughs> uh, there are actions in the crowd. Few smiles, many frowns, and many people just trying to remain with a blank stare, but obviously uncomfortable. Now, I'm not a psychologist, and I'm not going to talk about psychology today. But I'm a pastor who believes that Jesus is always offering and challenge us to see, to speak, and to act in new ways. And it's all right to feel good about yourself, but not to promote yourself at the expense of others. And we live in a society 
that is consumed with worshiping people who are all about success and what they've achieved. We call some of them celebrities. We think of names like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Angelina Jolie, Britney Spears. It creates an environment that values achievement and leaves many of us at the bottom. It's a system that we all face and have to learn to navigate. But Jesus offers us an alter alternative. Yes, we live in a world that, that admires self-esteem. But what Jesus offers us allows us to live in relationships based not so much on what we have accomplished, but on what God has accomplished. I think of it as God esteem. What does God think of us? Well, we know that God loves us just as we are. It's basic to our understanding of this relationship. And God sends us Jesus to save us from ourselves and to set us free to discover life serving our neighbor. It is not something, of course, that you earn by good behavior, by becoming number one in your gift, or following all the rules. It's there for us when we are successful and when we fail. Whether we are young or elderly, in good health and poor health, whether we are celebrity or social outcast. Mike Hank, who some of you know, is pastor of Salem Lutheran Church in Toledo's North End, what is called the Vistula Neighborhood, a church that serves people living in poverty. He says he's cautious about any recognition of himself or of Salem's ministry, because he says that he's learned that recognition can actually hurt you. It can hurt the people being served. It can ignore those behind the scenes who are key members of the ministry. It can elevate people who are recognized to their level of incompetence. In the church, though, we do have God esteem issues. We want our churches, our congregations, to have a positive image. We call each other family, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. And we take criticism personally. But as church, we should expect that there will be times when we will feel uncomfortable. Times when we will find ourselves taking unpopular positions for which we are challenged. Jesus did. He is being watched because he eats with sinners. He hangs out with the outcast and he breaks Sabbath laws. People of Park Church and Holy Trinity, we have a common bond secured for us by the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who bound us together by our baptismal promises. And we share a neighborhood where God has called us to serve our neighbors, giving expression to ministry in different ways that raise up people and walk with them and in my two years of walking with you, I have not witnessed a spirit of competition like I often experienced in people talking about various churches. But there are actually people who come up to me and inquire about Park Church. 
What's going on in Park Church these days? When will we be getting together again? Is there something more that we should be doing together? There is a mutuality here that is refreshing and healthy. We give thanks for what we have in common. We respect each other's understanding of mission and the ways in which it is expressed through the gifts of the people of God at Park and Holy Trinity. Jesus' last words in today's reading, he says, invite those who cannot repay you to your party. You will be repaid at the resurrection. So we really are not to worry about whether or not we are repaid or recognized. It's important to do that, though, to say thank you. But the Spirit of God is working in the details. In ministry, it's about getting our own needs out of the way and let God do God's thing. God knows our part. And that is enough. Keep your face, your focus on those being served. And God will take care of the rest. Amen.